Um, but I was gonna say Last of Us, the third ep- the third oh, episode, yeah. the sweetest, nicest, saddest thing we've seen in a very long time. Like I don't know how people do this alone, walking yeah. into you know emotional buzz saws like that. Because if I didn't have Jay being big Papa Bear there at a moment, or just like I don't know what to do with myself, this is I could do it by myself probably. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, thanks everybody. It's been nice talking to you. <laughs> everyone welcome back to the reactiverse podcast brought to you by passion fruit i'm joined today by two uh, incredibly entertaining people in the space that i've followed for a while now i'm very happy, happy to have them here uh you may have seen them on our doctor who episode of crossing the streams but they're back now one-on-one it is jay and adam uh from previewed hey why hello everyone <laughs> uh thank hey, you guys so well much man. for being here <laughs> thanks for having us yeah, I've been following your channel for a little while now. Uh, obviously, I see you in my recommendations and on the J2O reaction compilations. I always love seeing you pop up in there. Uh, but ultimately, what got me sort of onto you was uh, my good friends late to the party and how much they would gush about you two. Uh, they, they're just really big fans. Uh, so I was always like, kind of like, I got to check these guys out. If they say they're good, I know they're probably good. <laughs> Yeah, we, we we like to we like to foster uh, a, a a healthy uh, uh, rivalry. Uh, with the two of them yeah <laughs> and also there may be a running joke on the channel that we are them one level inception down or right. vice versa right like we're, we're gonna get the kick and wake up and be like oh we're late to the, the party, party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i know you guys had a really great match with them on so the score a while ago everyone should go check that out if you haven't already oh yeah that's uh, right thanks for promoting yeah. our loss yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we did lose. Yeah, we did it was lose. Good, it was a good game though. It was, it was a fun game. I, and I haven't forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get the rematch in there. Uh, but you guys have been at this for a little while now, and obviously you have a big story to tell in terms of like your experience with it and the transitions you've gone through with the channel. So I kind of want to cover all of that. Um, but as we always do, we start from the beginning uh, between the two of you, which is uh, how did you two meet? Jay, do you want to go first? <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I, I, I don't know. You seem really excited, but I'll go. Uh, <laughs> Adam, uh, we met uh, through a mutual... Uh, Ad, Adam and I, for a long time, uh, uh, were hustling as stand-up comedians in New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and we met through a, uh, a mutual friend of ours. And we ended up... Uh, he, he I, I believe the term was, you guys both think The Dark Knight's a good movie. You guys will be friends. He's one of those people that's like, The Dark Knight's not good. And I'm like, that's wrong, but okay. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how we got introduced to each other. And then inevitably, uh, uh, we started a podcast uh, with this gentleman. And uh, uh, we've been, we had been working on that for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started, uh, and Adam and I, like, We've we've always been friendly, but we were. It, I would argue at that point in our relationship, we were closer to like acquaintances. Like we we had similar interests. Yes, but like, um, and then uh, as we started working on this show, we kind of we were getting closer and closer. And then uh, the podcast had a very similar vibe to reaction. It was about like movie trailers and talking about what's coming out and stuff. Right. And so uh, Adam had the genius idea of being like, well, this is similar to this. On YouTube, people are making reaction content like we could make this reaction content to promote the podcast in this other space. And then Adam and I realized that we really liked doing it. (laughs) Uh, And the podcast just kind of just just kind of it it ran its course. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it got to a point where Adam and I were both like, hey, we're we're gonna keep doing this, and they're like, uh, okay, I, it's that's fine, uh, and so yeah, and that, honestly, that's what's been kind of fun about our content is that like, you know, we we run the the 
one of our tent poles, like statement wise is like internet best friends. Mm -hmm. And like Adam and I have been slowly, but like people are like, they've been best friends forever. I'm like, no, that's the magic of it. We've been (laughs) becoming best friends with the channel. Like, so it's been kind of fun to watch that evolve as well. Did I miss anything, Lashy? Uh, No, you didn't. You did a good job. (laughs) (laughs) From from my perspective, um, every, when, the pod, we were trying to really promote the podcast, and I was like, how can we do it? Maybe we can somehow utilize YouTube. Because at that point, I had never heard of reaction content at all. Me neither. And then I don't remember exactly. I thought maybe I, I, I might have typed in like trailer reactions or trailer you know, movie trailers or something. Just kind of see what was out there to see if anything else was going on. If we were you know unique in this space. We were doing reaction kind of just a podcast form. We had no idea. And I just saw like okay. Rejects, Late to the Party, Blind Wave, and a bunch of other channels that were around at the time. And I was like, wait, people have just filmed themselves watching things and then just react? They're doing what we're doing, but on camera. Oh, but we're... Uh, <laughs> but that we're, makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that makes... you can see the people. Yeah, and we're comics. <laughs> probably- so like we could easily do that and be funny doing it. We should just do this on t- camera. Right. <laughs> uh, so like, yeah, when Jay and I started, because we there was four of us and then we would just, because the only camera, I we used my old iPhone and a dangling <laughs> lav mic that was just, <laughs> just, you know, sometimes did the boom, boom is just <laughs> gets right. to the top of the frame. <laughs> and it's like, okay, the quality, because a lot of people, you know, back in this is 2016, 2017, beginning of 2017, it's like, so, you know, there was a lot of good tech out there, but it wasn't the, the stuff we have now. And people were just doing it with what they had. And it was okay. It didn't matter like how good your tech was. Just it was the content that was the. Yeah. yeah. And so we're like, we can do this with a cell phone. Okay, great. This There's no barrier to entry. We already have the technology right here out in front of us. And so when we were pairing up and we would do different pairs, every time Jay and I were paired together, I was like, hmm. This is it. This is, we're. We're really good at this. The bit, bit, the bat, the bat, da, 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 da. Yeah. It's like, hmm. and then when the podcast fizzled, you're like, hey man, I think there's a there's a path on YouTube. I don't know what it is. I don't know if we'll ever get there, but it's possible. And yeah. nothing else seems to be working. So you want to keep trying <laughs> to try this? Yeah. And it started as we wanted, like, really the the mindset was like, you know, in in the in the in the entertainer space, like a. And in the actor and stand-up comedian space, it's there is a there's a value to having a social media following. And I was like, I'm not really good at Instagram. I'm good at Twitter when I remember it exists. I was like, if this is a way for us to build a following that would, you know, come to a stand-up show or something, Mm -hmm. like, then that's cool. And then the more we did it, the more I was like, oh, I just this this can be it. This right. scratches the itch. Um, and then COVID happened. And then <laughs> and then uh, and then we had a lot more time to make stuff. Right. And then it became our jobs. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's that's like the usual trajectory of like how this thing goes it starts as the hobby, the passion, then it turns into like, oh, this is actually a thing we can like sort of depend upon for a little for a while now. Um, when you got started, though, you mentioned like the iPhone and like that sort of thing. Uh, was there any sort of significant technical learning curve jumping from the podcast, to, like the video aspect of things getting on YouTube? Uh, so, yeah, uh, we I always wanted to use the green screen uh, because when I was watching these channels and learning like what reaction content was and what people were doing and stuff like that, everyone had a nerd wall behind them. Everyone had like <laughs> like kind of what Jay has now. His, I don't know in, what you're talking in about. His shot, <laughs> but, J- but Jay, that accumulated over eight years. Right. When we started, we didn't have trink. Well, I, I don't have trinkets behind me. But- I'm, a, I'm a trinket person. I have many trinkets. <laughs> it has trinkets. Uh, and the peaches have only made that worse. They have they have enabled my trinketry. <laughs> is that a word? I think it, it, is, it is now. It is now. Yeah. Uh, so, like, I didn't want to, like, we needed some type of background to like inform like you know the shot or what have you and like kind of i wanted to stand out from everybody else because everyone had you know anonymous nerd stuff behind them we had none of it so like well since we're kind of we were thinking ourselves as kind of like mystery science theater well why don't we just do it in a theater okay i know green screen because i was shooting sketches and stuff 
uh, utilize the green screen. So mm -hmm. I learned how to key in things. It's so like, let's just do that. But I don't have any lights for it. So we were just hanging a green sheet and using floodlights and just using and, and just and, and room light. We didn't have we didn't have lights oh, and an iPhone. And and if you go back and watch our earlier reactions, it looks it. <laughs> it was, we are we are ghosts. <laughs> we, <laughs> we didn't know how to white balance. We didn't know. We didn't know anything, man. So like right. we learned everything the hard yeah, way. <laughs> we were stuck using my iPhone for until Jay got married. And then I used some of my wedding money to buy to buy a, a DSLR. Yep. And then I was like, "Great, okay, DSLR. How, how do I use this camera? Because the iPhone was just hit record and go. And right. then it's just like, oh, okay, so this is how you set up a camera. What's the ISO? What's the the frame rate? Oh, white balance. I've seen this happen before. Oh, <laughs> that's how you. It. Oh, we, we look a white balance. We look <laughs> we look so different when it's white balance. Oh. <laughs> Light has a temperature. <laughs> oh my god! And then I, then we, you know, we started earning a little bit of money on the channel, and then I was like, well, we should buy stuff because, like, we yeah. need to because these other channels sound great and they look way better. And I was like, how do we? Okay, we need lights. How do we? Okay, our do, uh... our mindset from the very like from the, like when we were just getting started was it's like cool. We're the channel is earning money and that's awesome. We're not like I was like, I'm not quitting my job anytime soon. I was like, we're going to take the money that we have started earning from AdSense and what and what have you. And then uh, we're just going to invest in all of the things that we need in order to make this at the top of the game. And then once that is established, then we can explore what's next. Mm -hmm. Right. So that was kind of like we, we kind of we kept our foot like one like we put one foot in at that point, mm -hmm. basically. Right. But it panned out. Yeah, I appreciate the um the facade that you've kept over the years of the uh the the theater background. Uh, it reminds me a lot of I've never ever seen it on uh, on cinema at the cinema the Tim Heidecker uh, series. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, they have a very similar background and it always reminds me of that so i always get a kick out of it um but when you started though uh with the reactions uh and you said you started uh looking at who else was doing it late to the party blind wave and a lot of stuff were there any sort of um key factors you took into account of like you know looking to how other people were sort of organizing themselves and how you sort of thought you could approach it hmm well at the when we were starting out i mean i was Jay was very busy with his his real job with his uh, at the restaurant, and the uh, R and D fell to me, and yeah. I watched a lot. I was watching a lot of channels, and I was watching a lot of YouTube videos of like of just how to make the things and structure a video and stuff like that. So once we got a couple of reps in, and like maybe about a year or so in, and having fun and kind of figuring out our voice and stuff like that. It was more along the lines of, I know what our niche is in this, mm -hmm. is yeah. that we're the funny ones. Yeah. We, we, come in from, we come from a stand-up comedy background. What will delineate us from other channels is that we are going to focus on being the goobers. Yeah. And that's where we leaned in. Because there was a lot of, yeah, we, we had like a pretty, like, a pretty... <laughs> compared to like what we normally do a pretty well-structured meaning of like what what are we trying to actually achieve here right. what do we bring to this because let, honestly we had no literacy of what reaction content was mm -mm. we had no we got into it we we fell literally ass backward into this <laughs> uh and so we didn't really understand like what the what the genre uh what the tropes were Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of learn a lot of that the hard way, but also I think that sometimes gives, gives us a little bit of an edge in that like we kind of do it a little bit weird. We kind of do it differently than other people, at least to some degree. We've kind of, you know, taken the edge off to, to give people what they expect from this kind of content. But it was, it, it started as like, we're going to be, yeah, we're going to be the goobers. We're going to be the funny ones. And then like, as it's evolved and what we've kind of, what we've learned about reaction content is at the end of the day, like we're, we're not blind wave. We don't have, we're not notebook people. We're not, we don't actually know everything. Like right. they, sometimes like, man, they know so much stuff about the stuff <laughs> they watch. It's 
insane. <laughs> like, I'm like, we're just, we wanted, it started as being funny, but then it like, when we embraced the concept of like internet best friends, it was just like, we want you to feel like you're watching this show with your friends. All right. And it's turned into, and it's kind of really helped with our community building and stuff. And what we finally ended up realizing about reaction content is that at least the way we do it, it's, it's about, it's about community and it's about like, there's a, the amount of people that reach out there like, Hey, I like this show. None of my friends really want to hear me talk about it. It's nice just to watch it. Like, I feel like I can just watch this show and I don't feel alone when I'm watching it. And mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, that's, that's where I feel like we, we, we give that vibe. Right. Like, yeah, but it took us years to get there. <laughs> took us years. To Cause like we, I've never watched reaction content until we started doing this. Yeah. And didn't, I never sought it out. I didn't truly understand it. It was I, I, truly the mindset of the beginning was let's go bit, crack some jokes. Let's yes. And the silly things in the trailers come up with a couple of bits, do a silly rating. And there we go. And there's your video. Um, and it got us, you know, a little success. Like we were growing, you know, decently fast. And we, I mean, we got a thousand subscribers in the first year. And I was like, I never thought we'd reach that number. That that's <laughs> insane. Oh yeah. my god! And just do this is fun. Okay, we can just keep doing the bits. And we, you know, we grew a little bit more in the second year. It's like, oh, we doubled our numbers again. Oh, this is really neat. But it wasn't until the pandemic started in March of 2020 mm-hmm. when everything stopped and we couldn't do trailers anymore right. um, that were like, well, we still want to do this. We don't know what to do. We kept, you know, we were paying attention to all the other channels and all the other channels were doing show reactions mm-hmm. um, like game of Thrones and other things that were going on at the time that it was so long ago. I don't remember, <laughs> but like, so we, we did tiger King. So yes, <laughs> cause we, I never, cause I, I'm do, I do most of the editing and I was like, that's a lot of work. And I've never yeah. done that before, and I don't know right. how to edit that. So right. let's just do trailers. That's easy. I can knock that out in forty minutes. Even and let's, let's just keep going. But like nowadays, those just you can stopped. do it in like fifteen minutes. Slashy, it's actually spooky how well, quickly <laughs> you can do a trailer reaction. I'm so good now. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got a much faster computer. Ten thousand hours. In a minute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, but. Once we started, once we did, when Jay's like, maybe we should just do Tiger King. It just dropped. Everyone's talking about it. I was like, I guess I'll learn how to edit for YouTube, how these things work on YouTube. And the, right. the long struggle of how to get past copyright and how mm-hmm. that whole thing works starts. But it, it was around, it was as we got through Tiger King that the comments of people really kind of starting to be like, hey, I've enjoyed your trailer reactions and stuff like that. And some we started doing some gaming network or gaming stuff. And it's like, oh, that was all fun. But like the community kind of started really snowballing right around then. Because like, we had always we've always said we wanted to foster a community that was in on the joke. Mm-hmm. That like we wanted, you know, sometimes people come and they're like, I don't understand a lot of these inside jokes. And I'm like, I understand that. But this is also <laughs> years late. Like we are calling back something to from years ago. Yeah. But uh, that th- when we started doing episodic stuff was when that started to happen, where people right. were like actually connecting with what we were saying, because a lot of trailer reactions kind of flash in the pan mm-hmm. to some degree. But this was like, no, this is people really connecting with the content. Totally. Um, uh, yeah. And like, you know, like you said, approaching it with a sort of comedic uh, uh, stance uh, because of your background uh, in stand up comedy uh, as a unique flavor to it, obviously. Um, how does that translate, though, going from stand up to like sort of like this sort of like, slightly more improvisational aspect of, you know, accepting the material and you said, like you said, like, yes, anding it to keep up the sort of energy and pace with like, you know, also digesting what you're saying? Jay, he smiled. Well, I have a pretty. I. I mean, uh, <laughs> the 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 nice way of saying it is that I. I, I mean, I have I have a pretty extensive improv background as well. Mm-hmm. Like I trained at UCB and at the Pit, and I've been on some uh, house teams for short form and stuff like that. So I've done a lot of improv. Uh, do, are, are you a D and D person, Eric? Uh, very slightly, yes. I've played a little bit, not super heavy into it, but yeah. 
from from a comedic perspective, the best way to describe it is that Adam Adam is a wizard in that he gets his magic and he, it, and it, with his stand up it is he works very hard and diligently he writes his jokes perfectly and that's where he gets his magic from i am a sorcerer i <laughs> i just ha- i just have magic in me and sometimes it goes all over the place so a lot of the improv stuff uh was fine and there was some you know i i have just had to uh, there was some. There was some. There was a learning curve, or not a learning curve. There were some growing pains because last year you'd be like, "Why did you just say that?" We're like, "I don't know. We're just sitting here watching a show. Like that's just what we're doing. Like there's no." He's like, "Well, what? What? Should, what, what? Like, what do you think should be the bits?" I'm like, "I don't know. They're just gonna come out. I don't know what to tell you." And he'd be like, "Oh, okay." And now it's just now. It, now he's he hops in just as quickly as me. But there was some very early on. Last year was just like, "I don't. I don't know about this, man." <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say. I think it, very early on, I remember you being like, I just don't know what you're going to say sometimes. So I'm like, yes, that's the, that. Yes. Huh? That's the fun. Yes. Huh? That's the fun. I don't even know what I'm going to say sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said you mentioned the growing pains about that uh, getting started. Um, I spoke to uh, Adam Lavic from Heroes Reforge about this. You know, they have a, a team of three people uh, who all live separately when they were starting out in those early years of uh, reacting to trailers like yourself. And they mentioned how the obstacle was, you know, when a trailer would come out, uh, they'd have to get in their cars, go to someone's house, go film, uh, get back, come bring the footage home, edit it, so on, so on. Um, and it was really a struggle for them to still sort of stay on top of that hustle that they wanted to be a part of to stay in the sort of the zeitgeist of it. Yeah. Did you guys have any similar experience sort of staying on top of that and coordinating those things? We were very lucky early on. We got real, real lucky. Because, Jay, uh, I've been living on the same street in New York for, God, for a very long time now. And when we were just starting out, Jay moved. And he ended up moving seven blocks away. I live seven <laughs> blocks away. He could just I, li- I lived a 10-minute ten, a ten right. walk. Right. So the amount of time, it became a running joke on Twitter. Be like, oh, surprise, like... Like I just got home from taping, and now Spider Man dropped. Ah, I put like got to put my shoes back on, uh, <laughs> because it just I would just hoof it up there and be, you know, uh, it's we we got. I would I would argue that that is a, a factor that that is a large large factor into our success early on. That I don't think we necessarily quantify a lot. It was just like we, it was, there was an ease to making content for a while because honestly, like I was, uh, I was, uh, head serving slash floor managing a restaurant. Right. And so, like, I didn't, like, I was, and I was working like, f- like 50 hours a week. It was just kind of brutal. Um, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but in restaurant world, that's an eternity. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so I only had so much time and I would just like go up in the, we would go up in the mornings and the afternoons and tape and then I go to work, but because I could just hop up, it was no issue. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, now, now that I've got the kiddo and uh, now that we're, now that I'm, I, well, I moved a little bit farther away. It is, I mean, it is a hurdle. I can imagine that would be a big hurdle for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we are very fortunate in that, uh, you know, we are very fortunate that we get to focus on this full time. Right. So, it, you know, it the commute's no fun, but you know, at the end of the day, I, we're still getting paid to watch TV. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> right. it definitely takes the edge off. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was difficult, I guess, for them, particularly here in LA, when uh, yes, like a, a five oh, mile yeah. drive yeah. is yeah. a can be like a forty five minute drive. You know, depending on time of day and traffic. Um, but when you were watching, uh, see, like in the early years, the trailers, everything that you're going for. Uh, you didn't just cover, say, the big temple stuff, which was like some, something a lot of people did. They would just cover, you know, Marvel, DC, Star Wars, stuff like that. You covered sort of everything under the banner of film and television. Uh, was there any sort of crit- criteria or approach you had in terms of finding those uh, those uh, those, uh, those trailers and curating what you're going to watch, particularly for the things that didn't have sort of like massive marketing budgets behind them? Oh, okay. Before you jump in, Lash, yes, before you I, jump I, in. Yes, go ahead, yes say, go ahead, Jake. Yep. <laughs> all I will say is... Mm-hmm. Eric, <laughs> this is going to be the second in a continuing theme of uh, Chaboys learn their lessons the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Lassie, hit me. So, <laughs> I back. This is so. This is between the beginning of 2017 and 2020, mm-hmm. and 
I we I because I was the one doing a lot, you know, but all, all the R and D and the deep research and trying to get that YouTube lore and how to figure out the algorithm. What does it want? What does it need? And the thing it needs just needs content. I got we just got to keep feeding the beast. So <laughs> I thought what the, the draw of our content is, we're gonna be the funny ones since right. So I mentioned that before, like people will watch us. We'll watch anything we watch just to see the bits because mm-hmm. we're, it doesn't matter what we watch. We're still gonna just riff off of it. And the, the the lower budgeted trailers, the better, because those are the ones that have like the the weird stuff in them. The mm-hmm. the, the the jank is there. It's like oh, there's yeah. there's some good things we can talk about and bits and like funny things and what have you. And there are some of the funniest things that we did before we started doing TV stuff was those movies you've never heard of. Yeah. In fact, we coined the term backtracing. Of trying to just search for random trailers just to make content off of it, off of a movie called Backtrace. I couldn't tell you what it's about. I can remember it's freaking horrible. It was so yeah. bad. We're like, oh, well, from now on, if we ever like are reaching to do a trailer, it's like, oh, wait, is this backtracing? Are we backtracing for a trailer right yeah. now? Because we don't. Well, specifically because we, we were, t- we for literally an entire year, I think it was, put out an episode every day. Mm hmm. We right. put out a trailer reaction every day. So it got to a point uh, where uh, – and we were and we were textbook. Before we really even understood it, textbook burning ourselves out. <laughs> right. and, it, and, it, and we realized that it was like – yeah, it, backtracing became almost a four-letter word because I was just like, are we, are we backtracing right now? Like, do we need to put this out? And we realized that <clears throat> that the algorithm would respect – like quality over quantity if that makes any sense right so we kind of had to start like being a little bit choosier about what we ended up doing Mm -hmm. well we were burning ourselves out (laughs) we we needed a break yeah Yeah. uh was there any sort of uh after that year you said of of going through uh, a video every day uh did you was there a sort of a precipice where you felt that burnout you're like okay this needs to sort of change for our longevity in this space I mean, I if I remember correctly, there was we because we we started doing we we thought we were going to be so slick and started playing games too and do some gaming content before we realized that's why you need separate channels. Mm -hmm. So we were trying to do both, and we were just shooting ourselves in the foot because that's not how the algorithm works. Or we didn't know at the time, but we we learned the lesson. We also just didn't understand uh, that the Venn diagram of people who like reaction content. We, we we thought that there would be some crossover with game content and reaction mm-hmm. content. There is not apparently. Not really. Um, so we kind of yeah we <clears throat> I don't know we we slung a lot of paint. We slung a lot of paint, and then right. like once we actually ha- like took a second. Last sheet. It's we're coming up on f- the this next month or this month I suppose it'll be four years since the pandemic. I know is that is that wild. It's wild to me. Yeah. Um, feels like feels like eight years but also two weeks it's very upsetting (laughs) um yeah i mean it really came down to like we 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 had to learn we had to learn so much like again the hard way Mm -hmm. that like by the time it almost like it's hard to quantify the process because like we were just at it every day and it just kind of slowly evolved over time right yeah well i mean we got to the point where like i think both of us didn't want to say it to the other person of like I'm I want to stop like we can't do this anymore yeah but I was afraid that you know Jay you know would say no we gotta keep going and I think the, and I think we're the reverse right Lashy, I'm always more so the Lashy. reverse right <laughs> Lashy <laughs> yeah I know okay <laughs> you are Lashy I love you you're very you're a wildly patient and very understanding person your resting face not so much uh, sometimes. So when you're like, you're like, it's time to make content. I'm like, oh, he's so mad. And he's like, oh, this is great. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Did we answer your question yeah, at did all? Did we yeah. answer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did. yeah I, think, I think that works. That works for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but within that, though, you know, obviously you did the trailers for several years up until the pandemic, as you mentioned when things shifted. Um, but in that time, you also began the uh, crowd work videos. That was, uh, again, hearkening back to your stand-up sort of background. And you mentioned community being such a large aspect of this. What 
uh, has those videos done for you in terms of sort of bridging the gap between yourself and the audience? Well, we started those, well, I, they, we kept, because when we started getting, when we started doing uh, television shows, we got a lot of comments mm -hmm. and some of them a lot. weren't the best. And it, but we were just sitting back like, this is, we're just cracking jokes and having a good time. A lot of people don't understand that's what we're going for. Mm -hmm. Um and that's fine. And that's fine because that's that's okay. But, you know, there are other channels. It's, it, no skin off our nose. It's fine. Um, but we were kind of giggling to each other about some of these comments. And I was like, I saw other channels, not in the reaction space, just in general, like, you know, re respond. You know, having videos where res they respond to comments or just deal with enough mail and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, we could probably do that. There are enough. <laughs> It's, you know, weird comments that we could, you know, riff off of and kind of like talk back to our community. What right. if we just did some of these crowd works? And the, the first three or four of them we filmed just, you know, not we didn't stream them. Just, you know, we just read comments and then we just bipped them yeah. back back and forth. Just had fun. Yeah. Like you just wanted to kind of it was nice to it was nice to like it was the first time that we kind of. We're, I mean, we're pretty open with our community about like our process and like what's going on with us. And, mm -hmm. you know, people like to know, like, you know, what's going on behind the curtain. And we're, we're really open about that with, with folks. And that was also the, the kind of like the crowd work videos were the ones that like we started building the lore of the actual channel. Right. And that was when we kind of saw our discord community start to like really grow and become more vocal and, the discord community like kind of started building its own like its own like sense of like self the joke mm -hmm. yeah own self of self yeah they were they were in on it right. <clears throat> and so like you know that's the the crowd work is when we kind of started figuring out like what what we actually wanted to do right if that makes any sense and that's why those have become our live streams because like they're kind of our they're where we just get to you know do silly stuff and have fun yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we, yeah, we got streaming computers during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, wait a second. There's not a ton to do right now because you know, every, you know, everything's been thrown off because of everything. We could wait. We could just. This is easy content, and you and we can just talk. We're very yeah, good we at just, just talking. Fun. We just yeah. have fun, so we can just talk yeah. for a couple hours on and stream. Hopefully, people do that. So hopefully like, that'll translate. Yeah. 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 Because I had been, I started streaming uh, in the middle of the pandemic, and uh, I, I always just viewed it as community hours because mm -hmm. uh, it's just the easiest way. It's like, hey, there, there's so many of you on Discord. I can't always talk to everybody. Like, I'll, I can't respond to everything, but like, I, you know where I'm going to be. And right. then that just it kind of became my like, I I really love streaming, <laughs> so uh, it kind of became. I, I got really literate in like how that stuff works. So I also felt cool because I was just like, well, we could stream crowd work and I could build it because I, I was like, you're the one that does all the editing all the time. And I feel like I, I feel really <laughs> stupid sometimes when you talk about stuff because I don't really know what you mean. Uh, so <laughs> I can do this part. And so, yeah, it just it just turned in. It's it's become it's taken on a life of its own. Absolutely. There's a moral of the story. Right. Um, and, uh, again, you, that helps you sort of foster the community through the discord and through the videos itself, uh, which, uh, you affectionately refer to as the, the peaches. Um, yeah. what is, uh, I guess the origin behind that term for your, for your audience? Okay. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's back up to, I think this is, this is about a, in 2019 and I, sure. I, I am, was it 2019 or 2020? Um, I, in my R and D phase of how YouTube worked, do what do we do to how does this work? How do we get people to be more invested in the videos? Because mm -hmm. um, there's a whole science. There is a science behind it. It's, it looks like magic. Cause like, oh, they're not doing anything. Actually, we're doing a lot of things. And I, it, I took a, a course. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> how 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 business? How and this is it's, how it, biz? Because it's it's across the board. Like every business does this. It's like, oh, I I yeah. didn't take. I went to school for engineering and then transferred into communications. I don't know anything about business. Right. Um, and I got a musical theater degree. <laughs> money well spent. Uh, so one of the things I learned from this thing is like you know like have you know making the group 
figuring out you know what the you know the the in the in jokes the the callbacks the the rituals of videos and stuff like that and one of the things that i had noticed in a lot of other people's videos but never really paid attention to it until i saw someone talk about it was usually communities have names <laughs> sometimes the communities name themselves sometimes they are gifted that name by the the people in charge of the community whatever um and so Jay and I were talking about all this stuff, like going over all my notes. It's like, we should probably do this. And we should probably do this. So we got a ritual, blah, blah, blah. He's like, we should probably, we should do a thing. We should somehow, I don't know what it is. And he's like, don't, don't, tr- Adam, you're going to try to write it. Cause I had, yeah. <laughs> I had, I had thoughts. I had ideas. I had written them down. I had a top five list. And he goes, good job. No. It's no. just, just, if you want it's it, just if you happen. want it to stick, if you want people to care about it and you want it to stick, they, it's, they got to figure it out. You can't write your own nickname, right? You can't do it. And hate. And so, and at, I was like, just, I was like, if it doesn't happen in a couple of months, we can, we can figure out a way to plant the seeds for something that you would like, but let's just see if people find something organically. Yeah. And we have a, we have a, Adam and I, uh, uh, and we put these out on our, uh, because like we want to, we want to, I call it warming up our friendship. Uh, like when we sit down in the studio to react, like we'll just chit chat about stuff, but we do it on camera just to get, just to get comfortable in front of the camera before we start and just kind of like gear, like prep everything. Yeah. Um, and it usually all those go in the behind the scenes of on our Patreon because sometimes sometimes warming up our friendships is twenty minutes of us talking about Pokemon. Uh, you know, it's no, fun. No, not us talking about Pokemon. <laughs> it's a lot of me just talking uh, <laughs> about at, Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah at him. Uh, but also, it became uh, just just to get another little trick that I would do to kind of get Adam out of his shell a little bit is that more often than not, I would try because I start the episode, Mm -hmm. I would try to say something to get a rise out of him or make him laugh and then immediately start the episode. So he would start the episode laughing and he would also start the episode on his back foot and it would loosen him up a little bit. Um, And then for some reason, I, for some reason, one episode, I just thought it would be funny to just say, hey, peaches. <laughs> and it made Adam really laugh. And so I just. Because it was like my first idea was, oh, the community should be called the viewers. Because <laughs> he it's, looked me in it's my eyes previewed. and said it's that. Preview, it's previewed. Come on, Damn it. No. It's previewed. It makes sense. <laughs> they're, they're, see the name. They're the viewers of previewed. Come on. It's perfect. Shut hey, up. Viewers. <laughs> Because they outside people it's think terrible. like it's no, but terrible. like people are like yeah, because it's previewed. Shut up, it was good. Right. I understand why it didn't work. I understand, but it was it was not a bad idea. Shut up. Uh, but we had already kind of primed the pump with the community, being like, should, you know, putting out polls and just kind of like, like, what should we call our fan base? Blah blah blah. Uh, and, it, you know, so for like three or four episodes, I just kept saying, hey, Peaches, because he just would, re- it would just break him completely every time. Right. And then I don't, I don't even know who to, like, it, that's what they, that's what they were. And that's how we started episodes. It just, it, it, it just kind of happened. People just started commenting. Yep. That's us now. I'm a peach. I'm a peach. And, yep. and, and they and they still continue to love to give themselves new monikers. Like during during the strike when we were doing like really hardcore the Jeopardy reactions, mm-hmm. uh, I just we just would promote our podcast and I'd be like, hey, if you watch this, you'll watch anything. You slap goblins. And Adam was like, you can't call them that. And I was like, just I was like, it'll be fine. It's funny. And then everyone started the, the Jeopardy fans started calling themselves slop goblins, <laughs> much to Adam's chagrin. <laughs> I'm just, every, listen, everything is said in jest, but there are some times when Jay says a thing, I'm like, I hope no one takes that the wrong way. Yeah. So far, no one has, but I'm always getting a little like, I don't know. I, know, I hope they- not. But they, they have know. I know. know. I am aware. Yes, we are. I know, I know. Slop goblins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> 
a bit much. I'm a, I'm aware that that one pushed it, but they they liked it. <laughs> they liked they it. They still call themselves that, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Yum yum. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean that, that that's how it goes, though, right? You know, like the, the sort of uh, beauty of this stuff is when it sort of nat- form naturally formulates uh, and it comes to fruition just through the community uh, reciprocating that sort of uh, genuine expression of interest and passion behind uh, you two as as the face of the channel. Yeah. Um, and uh, getting into that, so you carried that uh, community into, as we talked about, the pandemic, which was such a huge shift for everyone across the space, on camera, off camera, in many ways. Uh, and But like you said, that gave you the opportunity to do uh, more uh, movie reactions or TV show reactions as well. That sort of shifted your interest in the channel of like how you sort of approach the content. Um, what, what was that transition like, I guess, for you uh, getting into uh, the long form reactions when you had been such you know so ingrained with the short form reactions of the trailers for so long i mean it was a matter of survival mm-hmm. yeah i mean we tried when the when the lockdown started in march of 2020 we're like okay well thankfully jay is only seven blocks away so he can walk to me so he doesn't really have to be around people so that as long as we're you know just isolated by ourselves great and then you know we, could, we had a couple ideas of like we could go back and do some trailers from our childhood or you know some of the favorite stuff that we never saw before because you know the trailers that came out before the channel existed and that worked for you know we did stuff for a couple of weeks or so and it was like we can't this is gonna go on for a while i just had a feeling this is gonna last a while this right. is this whole little trailer thing isn't going to work for this trick isn't yeah. going to work very much longer. We need to figure something else out. And Jay's like, we should probably do the TV shows that everyone else has been doing for a while. And I go, OK, well, f- I guess we'll figure that out. But thankfully, well, I know it's a weird term to say. I appreciate you giving me the credit for that idea, but I don't think it was me. I think you were the no, one. No, dude, like- you're the one that said, I've already watched this. Adam, you need to watch this. This is insane. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And, and I, I, I've, I've watched most of your other uh, interviews with other reactors, and I know a lot of them have also said the same thing. Um, but it's, I think it's true across the board. I, the, the pandemic was really good for us mm-hmm. Be, yeah. because it allowed us to have the time to learn how to do the thing. Yeah. Right. Because Jay was, you know, as he said earlier, working 50 hours a week at a, a server job. I had at a, that point. I was aggressively unemployed because restaurants went, there was no, there was no like work from home. It was like, I'm sitting at home. I need something to do. Right. Uh, And before, before the pandemic, I was, I had a a bunch of, or a handful of part-time jobs that, you know, I was able to pay the bills with, um, which was good, but I had, you know, more time to, you know, tinker and do things and edit and all the little things. But Mm -hmm. now with just time, I was like, oh, this is perfect. Now I can actually just sit here and figure out how to edit, figure out how to start a business, figure out Patreon, figure out all the things that it seemed like these channels figured out a while ago that we had just literally not had the time because we were trying to create content and survive in New York City. It was very yeah. hard. But now that we just we we were forced to do something. I was like, great. We have, I have, we have the collective time to figure this all out. And I mean, because we had what, Tiger King and then came, we did first and that hit like gangbusters because everybody watched it because that was the first thing that dropped really when the pandemic hit. And then, yeah. and then was it, uh, and then there were a couple of shows that were already in the pipeline on Netflix during the summer. I think, was it like Jupiter's Legacy or was that the next year? No, that was the next year. Uh, and Umbrella Academy. Like there were a couple of things that dropped that in 2020 that were all going to come out that were you know, already shot before everything went kaput. So right. I was like, oh, this is good practice. Okay, boy, this is really hard and it's taking a lot of time to figure out how to, you know, the scheduling of things and the editing of things and the rendering of things. Like, sweet right. Jesus, rendering yeah. on an older computer. Like, this is, this is so hard. And there's lots of trial and error of how do we, because we have a background, so I have to render everything once before I even start editing because everyone else... Right. Not many other channels use a green screen. So like they just, you know, it's like, boop, 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 everything's fine. Or some people just, you know, are, are filming themselves on like OBS or something. So they just, they're just, they already have to buy the clip. So I can, no, I, it takes hours yeah. for you. It's like, geez, okay. <laughs> that, so this is how, the, this is how it works. Wow, this is going to take a while. Well, think if we had a while. So yeah, yeah. It, we just, we're able to use the time wisely. 
Yeah, and uh, that sort of, again, transition of jumping into the TV stuff reaction, long form things, and like how that just kind of compiles the workload exponentially. You know, you do more, you learn more about how you can do stuff. It adds more to your workload. Um, once you started getting uh, traction with that uh, and say after a year and a half, you know, two years or so, once we started sort of getting back to an idea of normal from the pandemic, um, did that sort of change your idea of like, okay, our trajectory now moving forward uh, with the, the ideas that you can play with now that you have these sort of newfound skills and like this new foundation for yourself, uh, trying to get back to like, say what you had before, like, did, was there a new horizon for you to see like, okay, what, what we can, what can we do now that the world is sort of, sort of healing? I have to be honest, my, like my frame of reference as to like life going back to normal is so the time dilation, something, I think something happened to us mentally. Cause I was like, when the pandemic was over and then my brain immediately went, is it over? Yeah. Uh, it, Some would say it, no, it right? is, <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, I mean, I don't think we ever really looked back since then. I mean, like we, the, I mean, the big change for us was, um, I mean, I, and I think a lot of reactors that started around the same time as us would say so, but like, uh, was like Mando season two was, the, was the, that was the changing point. Right. Mando season two into, uh, WandaVision and Loki season one. That was when we realized, um, this was actually going to be like, this is the new norm. Yep. This is, this is our new normal. Um, and also, um, that's when we launched our Patreon and that completely changed the game. Um, we, we for the longest time have had the mantra, uh, we don't, we're not going to, and this is the one thing I tell people specifically when they ask us about Patreon and whatnot and all sorts of everything social media, do not do or like don't give your audience something until they are clamoring for it. And that we waited to start Patreon until there were enough people being like, hey, I would like to see this whole watch. You guys, need, hey, you like we may, like we started Patreon at, like against our will. <laughs> like <laughs> that's where he, like and because people are like, hey, like this like took off. Like people really got into this. And I'm like, yeah, because like we like we waited until that there was enough. You got to sometimes you have to wait for the demand. Right. And so, mm -hmm. like, some people be like, you guys took forever to get a Patreon. And I'm like, yeah, but then it was actually like something people wanted. Um, and then once we got that up and running and I'm very honest, I have to say, and, and, and I'm, and I'm speaking mostly for a lot of what Lashy's labor on this, but, uh, I, I am wildly very proud of our Patreon. I feel like we offer a huge ROI for what, like, uh, for what, uh, for what it is. And I think it's, and that's why we had, we don't do a lot of sponsored stuff because I'm like, just go to Patreon. I was like, we can control our product there. Like, right. um, but that kind of change when the transition into like being full-time content creators is still something I'm wrestling with. If I'm being honest, mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky and it's, uh, and being your own boss is tricky. And I think our, our flavor of it being tricky Lashy, correct me if I'm wrong, is that sometimes we, we go a little too hard and we do a little too much. <laughs> well, yes, the, because we just, we we're still pushing our limits. We're still going plus ultra sometimes, and we mm -hmm. just uh, don't exactly know when to stop. Because we are kind of worried that it might go away at any time. Yeah. Right. Because th this ride is, is great, and we really enjoy it. But we we are we exist at the pleasure of mega corporations. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. we the, the landscape could change. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like. Yeah, to Jay's point, like it took us a while to figure out Patreon because we didn't know what to do. <laughs> no. We didn't. What what content goes on Patreon? Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, what? How do we? What, we? I would just do like a, a. How do? How do you do a watch? What the heck's a watch along? I don't even. <laughs> well, how do you put a time code on a thing? I, right. Like it's it's all like it was such a long process of. Figuring out how Patreon worked, figure you know, looking at and researching other people's Patreons of like, what are they offering? Can we do that? Boy, we don't have that much time. Like, that's it's just the two of us. 
okay, so we guess we can do this and that and this. And like, well, you know, it, it just, it, the process takes a while. Right. And thankfully we were able to figure it out and figure out a workflow and, you know, make it work. Um, but it's, when we started doing episodic reactions, we were still using the camera that Jay got from his wedding, a DSLR. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing about that camera that we didn't know about was that it only recorded. <laughs> I, I forgot about this. <laughs> it only recorded in uh, 20 minute files. Right. <laughs> so when we were watching like Tiger King, that's five files. Yeah. Or four files because we had to but- keep track of the timer. <laughs> See where it starts to blink and like, because we didn't know if it like, we were afraid to let it keep running and just like start a new file because we weren't sure it was going to. We thought just might stop recording and we missed it and we don't know, don't know where the stop point was. So we had to physically manually stop the episode, stop the camera, then restart the camera and restart the episode. And I have to resync it every time. Um, And then took a year for to figure out that, oh, maybe you shouldn't have the audio track of the TV show on your audio track because yeah. that clips copyright. So yeah. it's like, oh, we maybe should use headphones. Oh, everyone else is using headphones. Oh, that's why they're using headphones. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> like, you know we and we learned a lot the of things. Way. The uh, truly the hardest of ways. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, that's all the typical growing pains of, you know, learning how to do this, this stuff, particularly for the long form reactions. Uh, the camera thing is you know, such a, you know, uh, trial by fire. I think most people go through <laughs> figuring that part out. Uh, I'm glad you figured it out without having to go through the hard, hard learning process of like, oh, we missed it. It, it stopped recording and we didn't realize because uh, I've definitely heard those horror stories as well. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but I mean, over the last year and a half, obviously, you know, big life changes has happened as well. Um, Jay, you're having a kid um, and that just changes, obviously, your life priorities. Um, how has that sort of uh, balance shifted now, you know, the work life balance, uh, you know, having a family to raise and also, you know, trying to stay committed to this, uh, this in the space? It's been a little crazy. I mean, if I'm being honest with you, Eric, we've had uh, this past this past like six months or like uh, this past like, yeah, year or so has been kind of a roller coaster Uh, because in the summer we uh, we my my lovely son joined our family and he's just the cutest and the bestest uh <laughs> don't roll your eyes at me lashy i can see you <laughs> um and so i was on the nice I, I will say this um we were very fortunate timing wise in that my son decided to arrive uh when there was a little bit of a lull and stuff going on from a release schedule mm-hmm. like we we took a little bit of time off but like also there was nobody was really missing anything because normally like if we're not covering a show people want, we hear about it. Right. Um, but we weren't really hearing about anything. I was like, I was like, dude, I was like, I, I took a month off to for paternity leave. This is great. No one's everyone's understanding ain't awesome. Uh, and then uh, and then the strike happened. And I'm a member of SAG. So that put us in a very uh, particular you know, situation where we had to kind of revamp, uh, revamp everything. So it's been a lot of life change. I I feel like now we are getting to a point where we are finding the new normal. We're just kind of stumbling. We've just kind of stumbled upon it now. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Lashy, but it's been kind of, it's been catch as catch can for a while. Uh, I have never heard of that, uh, that statement before. Catch as catch can? I don't know. That... It's look, whether or not it's a statement, it's fun to say. <laughs> okay. And, fun, and I would argue it's fun to hear. Okay. Um I, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the the weird thing is like we have now technically been doing this for this is year eight. We started in December of 2016. Has it been that long? At the end of this year will be the completion of year eight. That's we're, so, nice. so we're in year eight right now. Four years of doing trailers and figuring out, figuring out, you know, how to do all that 
only for the pandemic to hit, realize we have to switch gears and like, okay, we got now we have to survive and keep doing this thing, which we really, really enjoy and are having a good time and finding success on. We have to switch up everything we've known and change drastically and learn this whole new skill set. Okay, great. Actually, we're really good at watching longer form things and cracking jokes and making callbacks and, you know, coming up with bits that last for some people far too long. And we should just shut up and watch the show. Um, (laughs) Yeah, some people really hate that we talk. And I'm like, this is our whole thing. This is the whole thing. Like, you know, I understand not liking it, but why did you need to write this? Like, why does every video like this? I'm like, I don't know, man. Maybe it's our style. (laughs) Like. Like why? Are, why is there paint? I don't know because they, they should be statues. I don't know. They, I, it's because I'm a painter. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know. So like a year learning how to do reaction content, and then the second year of the pandemic, kind of being like, okay, now what can we do? Oh boy, we almost lost the channel twice that year. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh oh. And then into that third year, like, okay, I think we finally kind of figured this out. Oh, Jay and Kimberly are pregnant. Okay, big changes on the horizon. Great. Okay, baby comes out. We, we, we are stretching out. We're streaming and doing game content. And we started let's just add in a, a live action uh, role playing game stuff. Sure. Why not? We love critical role. Let's do it ourselves and we can handle everything. Right. Wait, and, oh, and the podcast. You forgot the podcast. And the pot. I forgot. The, well, I forgot about the podcast. Thank and you. put out podcasts every week. We haven't skipped. We, have, we haven't skipped. Uh, and then the baby comes great life changing stuff. Okay. But we're figuring this stuff out. We, we got to We got a handle on things. We kind of know what we're doing. There's some good shows coming out. Okay. Oh no. Everyone starts hating Marvel. The SAG strike hits. We can't do anything for months. Oh, uh, let's yeah, we'll do rebels, I guess. And maybe an invincible when it comes out. And oh Jeopardy. no. And Jeopardy. And, and we have Jeopardy. the slop, the slop goblins. Yes. Jeopardy. The greatest idea is Jeopardy. <laughs> Best idea I've ever had. Jeopardy. Everyone loves it. Everyone loves it. Loves it. <laughs> Don't forget Jeopardy. And so then the strike finally ends. Jay moves a little farther away. So he has got some more space for the, his family. It's now March of 2024. I was like, okay, the strike's over. There's a lot of shows coming out. You know, Marvel seems to be making some moves. Star Wars is kind of in a weird spot. There's a lot of really good indie stuff out there. I'm like, Amazon's killing it. Net, mm-hmm. You know, Netflix is the Avatar show is, fan, was, is fantastic. We're only on episode three. We're, we're having a great time. Yeah. We're that, we're One that Piece was great. Like, there's a lot of yeah. you know, Arcane's coming yeah, back later this year. There's a lot, you know, some oh, other. Is it really? Yeah, later this year. <laughs> oh, snap. There's a lot of good shows <laughs> coming later this year. It's like, okay. And we, you know, when we started to like realize, like, oh, maybe we should go back and get the shows we missed. Um, like, I don't know. Like Daredevil's gonna have you know a new season. They, they revamped it, so like right. you know, hey, we could go back and do the Netflix Daredevil. That's canon now, and it's also been a long time it, since we've. Yeah, I don't that. really remember it. So like yeah. we've, I finally feel like knocking on all the wood that we have. I a, don't even know what you're saying, and I'm knocking on wood. We have a a much better sense of what we can do safely on the channel. <laughs> <laughs> so we've gotten dinged a couple of times. We're like, hey, well, we're never touching that stuff anymore. We, yeah. we hit the stove a couple of times like, yep, we learned a lesson. We're playing it. See you later, Super- Animaniacs. Get out of here. <laughs> Bye. We'll see, yeah, we'll see you on Patreon. I don't know what's going on in the future with your stuff, but I don't think yeah. we're covering it on YouTube because that is we are not not uh, not uh, we're not losing the channel over it. Right. No. So I, I finally feel like we have a decent understanding of what what reaction content is <laughs> finally yeah. and we can finally start actually being like hey we're like i feel like we're intermediate reaction content now we're not beginners yeah. anymore and we're clearly there's clearly higher levels to achieve i don't like, know how how blind wave does all those shows they have so <laughs> many shows yeah. i want to do that many shows but it would kill us it would yeah. kill us I have to clockwork orange you, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> I'd say you guys are uh, a little above intermediate at this point. You've uh, you've been through the grind, and I think you've had uh, some some decent stories under your belt. Uh, That's very <laughs> sweet. Thank you. Um, but really, though, it's uh, it's it's pretty astonishing how far you've come with like you know from the trailers over the pandemic just in a few short years because that's the crash course that we all kind of had to go through for certain things. Um, and so uh, you mentioned the strike. 
last year, obviously, that was such a big uh, pivotal moment for the entire space and the industry in general. Um, and Jay, you mentioned you being in SAG. That's, that was a uh, factor in why you guys chose to sort of pause your content uh, for that time. Uh, could you give us a sort of a uh, behind the scenes sort of process of like how you guys approach that in terms of the conversation of like, how do we, you know, make this decision and what's going to happen moving forward if it, if and when it does end? I mean, in for better or for worse, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't exactly a, a choice exactly in that uh, me being a SAG member, uh, I had a union rep that I could talk to, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I was given pretty clear gu guidelines on. Uh, they took a look at our content and they took a look at what we were doing and they were like, you know, here's, you know, here's here are the guidelines from. Like you're on strike, you're in SAG. Hello, you're on strike. Yeah. Uh, here's yeah. From a contract perspective, here's what's kosher to do, and here's what's not kosher to do. And so we just figured out a way to make content within those guidelines. Fortunately, like television, televised animation, game show, live stuff was uh, was not uh, under that umbrella, and so we just kind of made the best of it. It wasn't we. I, I, I will give us a lot of credit. I think we made, I think we took a lot of lemons and made a delicious lemonade with it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I, on a personal level, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I agree. We should have been lumped into that. Um, mm -hmm. But you know, I would, I am proud of my union for, for striking. And so I supported them to the best of my ability. But for me, I was like, it's sometimes a reaction. I feel like reaction content is more about connection and it's more about, you know, helping isolated people feel connected to a product. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are really searching for community when they're watching reaction content. And I feel like we can alleviate that. Uh, I don't, I ne didn't necessarily view it as promotion per se, but I understand that that was the line. And so we made the best of what we could. So Absolutely. it was, it, it was, on a personal note, it was really difficult for me because I felt like also everyone had an opinion, Eric, on what we should have, should have, should and should not be doing. All right. Um, and it did take SAG a while to get back to us, which was a little bit frustrating mm -hmm. in all honesty. Um, but uh, so we were kind of in limbo for a while, which was really scary because I just had a kid and I'm like, well, did my whole business go away? Because we just had a child and I'm trying to get back up to speed. Right. Um, but uh, the, all of that being said, and I and I am actually very proud of how we tackled it mm -hmm. because it could have been a circumstance that would be very easy to despair. Yeah. And... There wasn't a lot of that from the two of us. You, like, and I, I had a lot of my own personal baggage because I felt like my status was personally dragging us down in that regard. And that, like, we missed Ahsoka, dude. Like, right. I, and I know that, and I know that's not, like out of context. That sounds wild, like a wild thing to say. But for when you're in this business, that was a huge deal. Yeah, um, that was a problem. Uh, and I felt like I was like, well, we're missing the biggest show of the year from react. Like we're missing reactor Christmas and it's all Jaybird's fault. Awesome. Cool. Uh, well, time to feed my baby. I'm not sure what, you know, uh, it, yeah. Uh, but it also much like how the, the pandemic kind of brought us to like a new, like, uh, brought us this new concept of what we wanted to make the, the strike did kind of the same thing for us, but in how we wanted to make it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm, totally. Like we, we had to like re like seriously take a hard look at like what the future of content was going to look at for us. And it made us a much stronger content creators. Like mm -hmm. we, we started, we had to think outside the box. We had to make some weird choices, but also that affected like how we were looking at the future of going things forward. It's like, okay, great. Well, if we can, you know, if we can hire some editing staff here, we can put out like for the past, like since the strike ended, we've been for the most part, putting out an episode a day, which I know we said earlier burned us out. But now that we've got this process down, it's like, we can be going through this old stuff. We can be, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunities we're missing here because we had to, we had to leave our preconceived notions of what we should be doing. Right. It kind of opened up our opportunities a lot more. 
and uh yeah adam was he was yeah i felt really bad about it and he was really kind to me about it and i really appreciate you uh and we made it happen um but yeah it was it was wild yeah uh yeah, I mean, I totally, I mean, I, I was obviously, you know, paying attention to you guys and all the other channels that were, you know, making the decisions about how to approach that as well, uh, particularly for the ones who weren't in SAG and had to, you know, sort of infer what was the best practice to do, you know, at that time. Um, and then, again, we go back to the community aspect of things. Uh, did you feel that sort of support from the community uh, in terms of like, you know, being transparent, as you say, trying to inform them about like, what was the plan uh, between you two? Uh, I'll be honest with you, Eric, uh, the, we wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for them. And, and that's, and that's a, and, and that is a grandiose, like emotional statement, but it's also like facts and figures, numbers situation. Mm -hmm. Um, like, w you know, we were, uh, we had just, we had just spent a, a good amount of money producing an actual play D and D show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we had, we had really been investing in what we wanted to create and what we wanted to make. And we were just trying, we're like trying to expand what, what we are as creators and that takes money. And it got to a point where I was like, Oh, okay, cool. So we took a big gamble on something and now we can't do the thing that brings in the bucks anymore. And uh, yeah, the peaches really, it really helped us out. Right. And uh yeah, I don't. I, I I'm not sure what we did to deserve that. Sorry, I'm getting emotional about it. It's just really cool. Uh, they really helped us out, and uh, I'm not sure what we did to deserve it, but they just they are the awesome. They're awesome. Sorry. Uh, yes. You know who you know oh. who you are. You know who you are. It uh that we it took about three and a half weeks to hear from SAG, um because yeah. the, here, here's the thing to to take everyone back. We had just done a crowd work. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was our best one and we 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 pulled out all the stops oh man we worked so we were like cool we got all these graphics made of what we're gonna be doing we got a we got a whole roadmap for you idiots you're gonna love it and we're just and we brought our a game it's our best crowd work and yeah. it means nothing yeah <laughs> the, t the timeline of events it is jay um we had just finished uh filming our actual play DD show bonus action it, it's awesome please watch it um and then a week later jay's baby's born a week to the day oh, a week to the day like you yeah. like it could have been time better fantastic nothing was going on that month secret invasion didn't start until another month away okay. and we all like secret invasion that's gonna be probably pretty good right so perfect timing <laughs> perfect timing for all of this stuff so jay's back we're, we're catching up. We do a, a trailer palooza. We're catching up on some stuff. I'm like, let's have a crowd work of just, you know, of, of getting some comments, doing, you know, and just getting everybody ready. Like, Jay's back. Dude, yo, the end of the year is going to be got Logan is so good. It's going to be said, Invincible's Kill, but oh my God, this is going to be amazing. You guys. Strike happens on a Thursday. I was like, oh, that's, well, I hope that gets resolved quickly. Yep, they, they should strike. Yep, that boo, Makes the, sense. boo, boo the, the, the producer stuff. Boo. <laughs> we do the crowd work on a Saturday. Hey, here's the next five months, and 2024 is going to be amazing. Woo. And then, not let not more than 24 hours. Like I guess it was like that Saturday night, like ten hours or so later. Ten hours later, yeah. something somebody in Hollywood contacted somebody, and all of a sudden it's like. Hey, wait a second. Influencers, you guys are a part of this too. Right. And we just like Sunday we woke up and we started getting comments just like, "Hey guys, did you hear about the thing?" Blah, blah, blah. like, what are you talking about? Like yesterday was wasn't yesterday awesome? Wait, what? <laughs> and then just like huh? And so it took about most of the day of us reading things, everyone was researching it. Like even the community was like, so I found this and I found that and our module was like, what about this? What about that? How was this mean? And we're like, everyone's like trying to, f yeah. trying to figure our it Discord out. Discord was a, a flurry with trying to find information for us. They're awesome. Right. So for at least that first week of just like, Hey, maybe we just, we don't know what's going on. People are starting to come out with opinions. We don't know what the right move is yet. Let's just, let's just take a step back. Maybe maybe they'll come out with you know some actual guidelines and stuff, and let's just let's just see. And we you know telling everybody like, hey everybody, we're as confused as you. We don't know what's right. 
let's just, we're just going to cool off for a second. Yeah. And then we just kind of kept doing that for three weeks right. while we're like, what else can we do? Well, I, I, I had, it, I, of course me, I had plans. I had machinations. I like, we had, you know, I had, you know, D E F like, Oh yeah. We, oh, here's a bunch of different ideas. And Jay's like Jeopardy. And I was like, that's dumb. <laughs> nope. And he's like, trust me. And I'm like, yeah. how? He's like, just do it. I'm like, oh, just okay. Um, but we just, we're still, it, we, we kind of kept everybody in a holding pattern for mm-hmm. almost a month. Yeah. And and I felt bad about that, but there was really no other. There was no, we just didn't, we wanted to hear from know. SAG. We just didn't know. Mm-hmm. And so when we finally heard from SAG and like, hey, nope, here are the guidelines, here are the rules. Like, okay, great. We can abide by those. Fantastic. We, we, have, we have some fun content we can make during the time. We're going to be, we're going to be fine. But thankfully, because we were trying to be as forthcoming as possible, we're like, guys, we just don't know. We were waiting to hear from them. And like, oh, we finally heard from them. And here's what we're going to do. The, the community really was just like, it's all good. Don't even worry about it. We, we appreciate you guys, you know, uh, standing with the strike. This is great. You know what? Jeopardy. Jeopardy's awesome. More of that, please. Cut, fu- cut fire, dude. Uh, what can I say? Um, <laughs> but they, they stuck by us, even though we weren't able to bring them ahsoka and loki at, you know day of mm-hmm. um but but we were also we were we were taping a like a full week's worth of content but also we were we were preparing for what would happen when the strike would end right. and we we started calling that operation Firehose, and then that's what everyone else start, ended up started calling it too because it was like okay the fire hose like we will do like, you know, we're just building hype for when this is over because what else do we have built to build hype for? Uh, but we're, we basically were recording for, we had a shadow channel for a while. It mm-hmm. felt like, cause I was like, we have to get, we have to get these episodes out for the actual channel. And then we have to record all of this stuff. So we have it ready to go. Right. And, you know, I was worried we were going to be bored for a while, but we, uh, it was probably the hardest couple of months we've ever worked because we had to get all of that out. Totally. Yeah. But everyone stuck by us, thankfully. Yeah. And then when the fire hose hit and I was like, great, it's over. Thank God. It was like, is it done? Like we was like, we're awaiting confirmation. Is the strike over? And like, cause it, cause it ended on like, was it a Wednesday? But we weren't like, it's Thursday. Is it over? Do they have to vote on it? What's the actual, can we? Can we? We I think we triple checked before I like, I can't, Ahsoka, go! <laughs> Ahsoka, go <laughs> <Yeah>. live now! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It may yeah. be the most fun like weekend we've had as content creators, just because right. everyone was just so excited. And it was, I got to put out a schedule that was like two months long of like, here's all your shows. <laughs> I was like, you're getting one every day and they're going to be bangers. So. Yeah. I recall, yeah, it's like the uh, it was it was it did feel like the end of uh, Return of the Jedi with everyone sort of like celebrating launching their fireworks off <laughs> for yeah, yep, getting dub, back to it. Dub, 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 yeah. dub. <laughs> yep, dub. You know, the right song, the correct song, the original the song, song, the only DRG. song. There right. is no second song in the Ewok Village. It's just the one. Uh, yeah, I think that kind of ties into our sort of uh, final run here for the questions, uh, which is uh, what over your time with the channel, what has been the biggest obstacle you faced? Huh. Or at least the most consistent obstacle. <laughs> Copyright. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, from like from a, from uh, I'll, I'll Jay, I'll just speak from a no. I'll, this the, is the, street the content, level. I yeah, get it. the content going out obstacle has definitely been navigating copyright because there are no and for anyone who's watching this is like, hey, I want to do reaction content. How, what's the what are the rules? Man, I don't know. It's not written down anywhere. It really isn't. Yeah. Um, everyone's got their own variables in their head of like what is and what isn't allowed by their own trials and tribulations. But like, we were out just you know going out there trying our best and doing things. You know, oh, oh, it got hit copyright. It's blocked. Okay, no problem. I can you know massage things and re-edit. Blah 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 blah. But it's like, oh, it's up. It's fine. Oh, we just got a copyright strike. Mm. Oh, yeah. we just got. Uh oh! If yeah, one our, more our arcane episodes just got nuked from orbit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, and you know, you know that the, the fact that these copyright strikes can come out of nowhere and they don't have to give you a reason and there's no recourse about them, like I don't even know what we did wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh oh! How do I learn from this? I 
I can't. Oh, I can't. So we don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay. So like, it's it, it has been. That is, that is the scariest thing, because really, I truly just a, a mistake that we don't even know that we're making could just wipe us out. Yeah. Thankfully, we, me, haven't t- we haven't touched that fence in a long, long in a long while, yeah, but it's still like okay. we are still still looking for the fence. I right. would say the biggest hurdle from my perspective, a time, just because there's only a, we're, we're. I mean, this is something we're grappling with is like there's only it, it takes as long as an episode is, if not a, you know, with plus give or take like ten to fifteen minutes to make an episode. There's really no way to make a reaction video faster. Right. It's there's no way to speed up that process. It is what it is. And then so there's only so much time that we can make stuff. Um so time has been an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh but for me I think it's it's the unpredictability of what of and we do our best to like stay ahead of what's going to do well and what's not going to do well. Yeah. And we can there are some sure bets. But they're very, but they're few and far between. Um, just cert- some things that we, you know, like we we were behind the times on some things, but then like we were the first ones to do Invincible, and that right. paid off. We just don't know. It's difficult because in a, in an in influencer space, I hate saying that, but yeah. that's I guess what it's called. Uh, but in that space, it from like a, trying to monetize and try to be you know, good business boys, as we say, <laughs> I'm not sure that's, I'm not sure that's what good, I don't think good business boys would say good business boys. No, they wouldn't, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, in order to like, you know, foster like, you know, sponsorship relationships and things like that, like stuff to, you know, maintain and uh, keep the brand going. It's kind of hard. I, I hate being in the place sometimes that people are like, Hey, we want to sponsor this. How, how do you think it'll do? I'm like, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. The whole point is that we're seeing it for the first time. It might be the best episode we ever see. It might be bad. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. And yeah. that, that's and that's tricky. Yeah, being at the whims of of not just the algorithm, but also just like the reception from yes. yourselves yeah. and the audience. Yeah, it's many factors to consider uh, for that. Um, and my next question is: uh, How do you feel you've uh, grown uh, personally over your time with the channel? I've gotten much better at communicating with Jay and others in my life because uh, what we have done and what we are continuing to do and hopefully build into the future is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. And Jay is is my work husband. Like I have. You're welcome. Uh, Like this is this is a relationship that has been building on camera. But like there, this is hard, like interpersonal stuff of just, you know, just we're two individual people like hanging out, watching stuff. But like it's, you know, things are hard. Our normal lives are going on. We have we have trials and tribulations of our own that we have to conquer, deal with uh, things to get over. Like there's just there's so much to do. And also just also just be buddies and also yeah. how to. How to be good business boys. How do we do a thing we never went to school for? And we are learning as we go. And like, hope I don't mess this up because, you know, kind of everything's a little bit on the line right now. Um, It's. This is the most fun I've ever had. And I am living a version of my dream. I didn't even know was possible when I was a kid. Yeah. But. I have had to grow and change and learn new skills that I never thought I would have to, to in order to achieve and maintain this dream. Mm-hmm. That's a good answer, Lashie. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I didn't even write that down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's still, I stole a sorcery point from you, Jay. And uh... yeah, enjoy. <laughs> Twin spell. I wonder if I said the exact same thing. Uh, yeah. That's really nerdy. Uh, for me, how have I grown? Um, I have learned for me, it's been a lot of personal stuff. Mm. Um, it's, I have learned to, uh, how do I phrase this? I have learned 
that uh, <laughs> it's a lot of my growth during this has been a lot of uh, learning to accept and love myself for who I am. And it feels weird. We try to be as authentic emotionally and as, an auth as authentic as possible during a lot of this stuff. And it can be very vulnerable from time to time. And I have learned to accept that I've become a lot more emotionally strong mm -hmm. and like it and comfortable with my own emotional vulnerability. And I've also just become, I, I feel like Lashy, I've become a lot more decisive and I, I, from time to time I can, I'm from the Midwest, so I can be a little bit of a people pleaser and I have stopped being that way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. Cause I said so. You know, I'm, I'm, I walk around the studio just pointing at things and saying, no, yes, no, and yes. Um, no, but just I have more of a fundamental understanding of what I would like to put out and what I would like to what about our content I like and what I would like to resonate with people and making sure that's what we do. <laughs> like pr like previewed started as like two comedians doing reactions. And I, for me, it's turned into like helping people who like find community in the through the things that they like right. and that's what's important to me now like the fact that like people are meeting you know their quote unquote internet best friends on our discord and like you know it really that's what really means i didn't realize that's what means a lot to me but i've figured that out and i'm i, I love doing that so now i figured i was like oh great that's what i want to do now yeah, I think that probably ties into our uh, final uh, question for the main part here, which is uh, beyond any financial or monetary value, uh, what would you say is the most rewarding aspect of the channel for you? For me, it's just, it's that. I, mm -hmm. I mean, the amount of people that reach out to us and say, you know, hey, you, it's, and it happens on my streams a lot, and it happens on, we get a lot of messages all over the place from that. The amount of people that are just like, hey, your guys' videos got me through a really tough time in my life. That's it. That's it. That's why we do this. Like that's, it isn't how we, it isn't why we started. Nope. But, but it's how we're going to finish it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what means the most to me. Uh, since Jay covered that base, I'm going to cover it. <laughs> I got the good one. You got the good one. Yeah, uh, you can just say it with twin spell. You can just do it, I, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Counter spell. Uh, oh, don't. Uh, yeah, take, yeah, take it away from me. Uh, oh, I, for me, uh, I, I love the fact that we have been successful in creating a space where a lot of people are safe and feel like they can let their uh, nerd flag fly safely. Um, but also like we have created a community that's in on the joke. The fact that we can go through the comments and just see people rip it into me for a silly thing. I said that Jay may tease me for, and then the audience is coming in with their own versions of stuff or Wait like, yeah, yeah, yes, Wait yes. Minute. Ending with Jay says, uh, Adam, kick that car, break your femur. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and, and or sometimes you can do it. I think you can get that airbag out. I think you can do it. We should try it. When I say something in clown on Jay, which rarely happens, but they're just like, yeah, <laughs> get, get him. You, you give me a little uh, you, you got it, not as much as you give me. That's fair. <laughs> That's I'm, a, fair. I'm a guff getter. Um, but just <laughs> the fact that, you know, in our, in our community, we had somebody, an offhanded comment by Jay sparked someone changing their uh, or creating a, a shadow account on discord to just be all shoes all the time and created a mystery for months about who is this person that's just off of a offhanded comment jay made i accidentally yeah. called someone shoesen instead of susan <laughs> and then shoesen started haunting all of our comments threads <laughs> yeah and just people just running with the jokes that, you know, the silly th offhand of things we say. And then they're just entertaining each other with this, all the stupid, silly things we come up with and just, you know, making gifts and memes and just like just goofing on us, goofing on each other. Ha but just having a good time right. enjoying, you know, enjoying us watching a thing yeah. is that is the thing I've always wanted. Just, you know, to be the kids in the back of the room making funny jokes, snickering about a, the thing they're watching and everyone going along with it. 
Absolutely. Um, yeah, having that, again, that community uh, built now over these uh, several years uh, is uh, really beautiful to see. Uh, and I want to get into our final questionnaire uh, for the show here. Uh, Ten questions down the line for both of you, so you can both answer. Okay. Uh, the first question is, uh, what is your favorite TV show of all time? Of all time? Mm -hmm. TV show, Parks and Rec. It's good, yeah. Oh, crap, I don't know. There's so many good ones. <laughs> Here's the thing. I don't rewatch TV shows. There Once I've seen them, I rarely rewatch them unless I'm watching it with, you know, with, you know, on the channel. Cause it's like, Oh great. I remember it. I got it. Like, yeah. Huh. You can just, you can just pick, you can just pick one. Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it? Yeah. We'll, we'll take that. We'll take the whole Parks and Rec. Yeah. Uh, hopefully That's this fun. will be a little easier. Uh, what is your favorite film? Uh, for me, it's uh, Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know it's it's hack, and they called it out in Gen V, but like it's 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 Star Wars, man. Star yeah. Wars. <laughs> Luke's my guy. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, Star Wars is such a formative film for so many people uh, that I've had on here, so it's uh, definitely not an uncommon answer. <laughs> that's not a yeah. That's not a weird answer at all. Actually, yeah. I know, but it, at Wars. this point, I know, but at this point, everyone's like, like you know, it's Star Wars. This is a stupid answer. It's like, no, but it honestly is. It's magic, man. He's the got laser swords. It's cool. <laughs> I saw when I was four for the first time on VHS. All right, that changed my life. Yeah. Uh, next question is: uh, What stresses you out when things don't go according to plan? <laughs> yeah. I can that um, yeah. <laughs> what stresses me out? Uh, yeah, I not not living up to expectations. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, what helps you relax? Video games. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's video games. Yeah. Good, good answer. <laughs> uh, what is the hobby or passion you have outside of TV and film? Uh, I mean, I, I have a theater degree, so theater is also a pretty large passion in my life, and like musical theater and things like that. Nice. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, also my my wife is also has a theater background, so we're we're big theater nerds. We see most things, and that's that's also kind of you know what drives people to some of our react. Like has been in particular, they're like, "It's Broadway people. They're okay. well, let's watch them because yeah. they actually know who all these people are that are yeah. the voice cast of this thing." Yeah. Um, you like sports, Lashy? Why? Are, what's <laughs> Jay? My hobbies and passion are have entwined with. What we're doing, I understand. Yeah. Like, yeah, we did monetize all, all the. We did monetize our our interest. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Unfortunately, I not because I work from home now. Can I answer this question for you? Please do. Politics. You like politics. You pay attention uh, to politics. I do. I'm a junkie. I got a my yeah. poli sci minor in college, and I really understand it. I yeah. can't help but pay attention. I also worked at the Daily Show, so like, yeah, I know all about this stuff, and it. It's the scariest story I'm reading right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a that's a that's a good hobby to uh, to be invested in, especially in this uh, in this climate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what fictional character do you relate to or just care deeply about? I think it'd be from Star Wars, if 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 you want. <laughs> um, truthfully, it's uh, <laughs> when it comes to previewed, I feel like I feel like. Um, uh, Dewey from School of Rock. <laughs> I feel like I just kind of I, I I showed up. This isn't what I'm supposed to be doing or where I'm supposed to be, but I'll be damned if it's not going to be a good time. All right. Um, this is okay. This is going to be a little weird, but my favorite DC character is Connor Kent, the original mm -hmm. Superboy. All right. Because he's the clone of Superman and Lex Luthor and has the possibility of you know doing great things and has the role model of Superman right there in front of him and is just trying to achieve that and right. so I, I've always felt like okay yeah I know the examples of all these heroes that are out there and these uh, paragons of truth justice and heroism and Standing up for, you know, not killing your father when you have the opportunity and all sorts of really cool stuff. But like, I am trying to be the hero these people inspired me to be. Mm -hmm. 
And even though Connor has gotten the short end of the stick at DC because I just don't know what to do with him, um, I still think he's the best character that they have. And yeah, uh, yeah. Connor can't answer. Yeah. He deserves no. he deserves more recognition, more than just the <laughs> Titans TV show that was okay. It was kind right. of okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Young Justice, I guess that was a uh, yeah. Oh yeah, Young yeah. Young Justice. I can't believe I forgot about that. Are they coming back for a new season? Did they say anything about that last season? I'm not sure. I think it's, it's, it's in limbo. Yeah, right my now. HBO cut everything. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? It's Max now. Shut, you shut your mouth, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. What is your guilty pleasure show or film? Dude, uh, it's it's uh, it's hack, but. Well, it's not a hack, but I I love uh, I love Fight Club. Oh yeah, I love Fight Club. It like it just like fuels the like inner like you know counterculture emo kid in my heart, <laughs> and I know and you know what I mean. Like I just and like yeah, it's not. And I love like I have I have a love for emo music. Yeah, like. And I, I know, I know <laughs> it's not, it's not really like a show or a movie, but like, I just kind of like, sometimes I like listen to, you know, listen to a little bit of emo and just like my feelings. And it's like, you're 38, man. It's, you got a kid. You don't have time for this. I'm like, oh, my girlfriend left me. No, she didn't. She, she married you and you have a job. You're fried. Uh, I'm, pff, anime, man. Yeah. Anime. I watch so much anime. And it's yeah. it's mostly just shonen, and I'm well, I am branching out and trying to find other things, but it's all you know it's all the same thing. Oh no, or maybe it's Isekai. I'm like I'm transported to a fantastic. Well, I gotta be a hero and achieve my dreams and do the things. And oh my god, to defeat evil. I'm like I, the story is over and over again. And I don't care. Yeah. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> yeah. I love it so much. Do you, uh, is there any plans to bring anime to the channel at any point? A lot of people ask that, <laughs> and the answer is probably in all likelihood probably no because. Uh, anime tube or any tube i i've just heard horror stories of trying to keep that stuff yeah. like copyright safe because uh the 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 how the production houses in japan like don't they don't understand western fair use or like don't like it or they just have a different attitude mm-hmm. for that type of content and uh it's scary and i don't want to lose the channel it would be I feel like it would do really well. It just, I don't know if it's necessarily worth the gamble of it or the, honestly, the headache, right. not even the gamble. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, I think we, we also are kind of are pretty happy with the, what we're making right now. So yeah, totally. It's its own beast. It's a, it's, a, it's a large thing to tackle. It really is. There's just so much out there. Yeah. Uh, even though I like one piece now. You do like one <laughs> oh, right, piece. Yeah. 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 Ah, man. Beans. I like that show a lot. <laughs> Uh, what show or film gave you your favorite reaction experience with the channel? I I think uh, for me, WandaVision, I think we had some of the WandaVision was really fun. Mm-hmm. In I the, still think it, it's it, the best it, content we've ever made. It was fun in the moment, but yeah, well, yeah, uh, sure, <laughs> sure. Um, I mean, Mando season two was really good. I mean, because there's, there's like the, there are the really big moments of like, oh my God, it's Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. Everything is right in the world again because there's yeah. my guy. There he is. That's how I remember him. The way he should be. Always. There he is. <laughs> and then there's stuff like Squid Game where I legitimately lost it. Right. And if yeah. Jay was not there, I don't know if I would have been able to to um, to get back to get control for in a little while because like yeah. that it was a it was a, it's it a topic was it's a heavy topic and a personal one for me and they 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 knew what they were doing when they made that scene it was just they did such a good job of orchestrating everything with the music and it's like i am i'm so susceptible to this yeah. um but like i that for me is one of the best things we've ever just one of the best moments between me and jay because like it just oh and oh and on top of that one now close second if not just tied for first was stranger it? things oh yeah stranger things episode four was it episode four Except when she's four, running yeah. up that hill mm-hmm. yeah i mean that whole season i mean we had some of our best bits also some of the best emotional moments um but i was gonna say last of us the third ep- the uh, third episode yeah. 
was just like we and walking into that. I mean, we never played the game. We didn't. I mean, I, I, that episode was just completely different than the story beat that was in the game, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but just like realizing what it was, like, oh, this is really nice. Where are we going? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! And just like we both legitimately just like this is the the sweetest, nicest, saddest thing we've seen in a very long time. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't like I don't know how people do this alone. Walking yeah. into you know emotional buzz saws like that because if I didn't have Jay uh, being big Papa Bear there at a moment or just like I don't know what to do with myself. This is I could do it by myself probably. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, thanks everybody. It's been nice talking to you. <laughs> wow, you know I love you. Uh huh. Not you know so sure anymore. Counterspell. <laughs> Um, what show or film do you wish you could erase from your memory and react to on camera for the first oh, time? Oh, react to on camera. <laughs> yeah, okay. not, just, not just fly it out. Yeah, react to, <laughs> again, on camera. <laughs> react to on camera. That's the thing. We try, um, yeah, we, tr- we only just started trying that again because we got, we almost got the nuked for uh, doing a couple movies during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. So we haven't really, we haven't done any movies on camera, really. But would be a good movie i mean i honestly i think if i may speak for both of us i think the avengers endgame i was about to say endgame endgame probably yeah. would be like if we could get that react like a fresh reaction on tape like that's that's the that's the hotness for yeah. as far as like what we bring to the table because that would yeah. be legitimately weeping as cap <laughs> stands there by himself just like well, yeah, I'll, I'll take the whole army on and then he's right. like, no, on your left and i was like I, I knew they were all going to come back and I knew they were all going to stand in the line somehow, but I didn't know yeah. I, it's happening. Yeah. Oh man, just, just yeah. so many nerd tears. But I mean, I was in the theater. If I was by myself now, like I'm being so open in front of the camera and just kind of like being my authentic self and not being like, I'm in public, sit next to Amanda. I need to kind of be like, you know, kind of cool. And like, just kind of, you know, I don't want to like, <laughs> you know, like, well, you know, with a bunch of people around me, like, okay, just, you know, but, you know oh, silent, silent t- oh, I cry. Not that I don't cry, I but you know, it, it's a little, you know, it's a little bit more, you know, like, you know, it's silent to myself. This, this is okay. I don't want to share this with anybody else, but like, yeah. oh boy. Oh boy. That last 20 minutes end game. Yikes. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I wish. Uh, I think I wish I could see everyone's reaction to Endgame. Honestly, everyone that I've spoken to. Um, and final question here is: What advice would you give to your past self if you can go back in time when you first started the channel? This is easy. Okay, uh, you're gonna fail, and that doesn't make you a bad person. Just uh, you, you, just get back up, keep going. I've I I have been a million different things. I have I moved to New York to be a to uh, you know be a musical theater performer. Got really close, made it, to, it was so close to Broadway. Didn't didn't end up happening. I started doing film and TV. Awesome, great worked worked a good amount. Awesome. Uh, that wasn't really that satisfying, and the work wasn't really that consistent. Uh, I'm gonna start doing stand up too. Oh, uh, doing stand up, awesome. Going up places, being funny. It's not really working out. It's not really that consistent. Oh, I found just you're going to you you'll find you'll find something and this is what I, I i have this is not where i thought my life was going to end up as but i'm glad that it did here we are and honestly i might be something else who's to say like the, the you're going to fail a bunch and that's cool dude yep yeah, uh the advice i would give myself in trying to not destroy the space time continuum uh <laughs> is just just keep going keep yeah. going yeah. Don't you quit. Don't quit. Do not quit. Uh, you have all the tools you need, and you uh, have the ability to gain more tools that you don't have yet. Just keep going. It uh, just and that's for everything. Just keep yeah. going. Just yeah. keep going. Yeah, the very very poignant sentiment to end on. Uh, I think. Uh, Jay, Adam, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a ton of laughs, which I was uh, looking forward to, honestly, from this one today. Uh, so I appreciate that. Uh, where can we find you online, uh, YouTube, Patreon, anywhere on the social medias? Jay, yeah, you can go to... Uh, this, this yeah, Jay's very good at this. Hand. Jay, go. Yeah. Um, I choose you. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing, if you'd like to join the Previewed Discord server, it is discord.gg slash previewed. Um, 
there's uh, an amazing group of people there. If you're looking for your own internet best friend, uh, if you'd like to follow us on Twitter or on Instagram, we are at P viewed. Uh, you can find us there. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, but also check out all of our other uh, channels. Uh, we've got, uh, if you are interested in me and Adam playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you can check out uh, bonus action. We all of season one is up right now. And there's some, if you want to see me be a dwarf, check it out and and adam have emotions uh check it out uh also um check out our podcast fix it uh where adam and i it's, it's kind of our writers our writers uh room? table writers room yeah, wow room. Yeah. sorry my brain is turning into mush it's all good dude. Our, our writers room podcast where every week we fix a, a property of some kind uh yeah we are we are all the places all the types come check us out fantastic uh you can find us here at passion fruit uh if you're watching this on youtube please like and subscribe all the good stuff if you find us on the newsletter please share that as well we appreciate any numbers there and we'll catch you on the next episode